This is Omar Nashashibi in Washington, D.C. with the latest on both the Section 232 steel and aluminum tariffs and the Biden administration's approach to the Section 301 tariffs on Chinese imports. Starting with the Section 232 tariffs that were imposed by the previous administration, those place a 25% tariff on imported steel and another 10% tariffs on imported aluminum. The U.S. and the European Union are in discussion to find a solution to the dispute between the two allies by November 1st and possibly by December 1st at the latest. In June, the two sides initially set a December 1 deadline for a resolution, which times with the WTO Ministerial Conference running November 30th through December 3rd. The timing then moved to moved up a bit as the European Union wants to put additional pressure on the Biden administration to commit to a resolution ahead of the G20 meetings the president will attend at the end of October, ahead of the new November 1st deadline. As part of his pressure campaign, sources here in D.C. are indicating that the European Union has told them that they, they will not extend their suspension of doubling of tariffs on U.S. exports again after doing so earlier this month, meaning tariffs will increase to 50 percent on hundreds of U.S. exports unless the two sides address the Section 232 tariffs to the satisfaction of all. In addition, the latest data from August 23rd shows that manufacturers in the United States are now paying $1,334 per ton more for hot rolled steel than their competitors in China, increasing the price difference by $226 rather in the first two weeks of August. U.S. industrial users of steel are also paying $734 per ton more than their European counterparts, up to, and it's another up, $118 in those exact same two weeks beginning of August. We have long believed that the U.S. will not agree to completely lifting all tariffs on imported steel and aluminum without placing other protective measures in place. As expected, we are now hearing that the U.S. is floating to the European Union a tariff rate quota system, or TRQs. This is a process where once imports of a specific product from a singular or set of countries exceed a specified level, U.S. Customs will then apply a higher tariff rate to that imported product for a specific duration. The two sides would have to negotiate the TRQ limits, likely product by product line, for the hundreds of different grades and types of steel and aluminum imported in the United States. The EU had previously indicated opposition to a TRQ system, but a limit on imports along with global import monitoring problem may be among the resolution here that we look at to the Section 232 on steel and aluminum tariffs. We still remain far away from lifting of those tariffs, but talks are ongoing and that could extend to other allies such as Japan and Korea over time. On the Section 301 action, imposing 25% and 7.5% tariffs on thousands of Chinese imports, President Biden held only his second call with his counterparts since taking office in January. Tensions continue to rise between the two sides, and we are hearing that lower-level staff discussions, lower ministerial levels, between Washington and Beijing are not productive on trade, and there is little, if any, direct engagement at this point. And that is concerning, especially for those that are trying to see a more a quicker re resolution of 301. This may have led the White House in September 10 to starting to float to the business community here in town new action against China. The USTR is looking into a new Section 301 proceeding that would focus on China's industrial and technology subsidies and impose new tariffs to specifically address those subsidies. This would require a new Section 301 subsidy investigation and would add another tariff list in addition to the ones imposed by the previous administration. We are hearing that if they were to create a new tariff list, UST USTR would likely reduce certain existing tariffs or identify specific tariffs for complete elimination that are already in effect. The Biden administration would seek to use these new tariffs as further leverage with China and encourage additional purchases of U.S.-made goods as part of the Phase 2 agreement reached under the previous administration. However, many in the business community had a cool reaction, to say the least, to the White House trial balloon that was floated the other day. Some are questioning why, when the administration admits on the one hand that tariffs have not worked as intended, they would then turn around and just impose more of the same tariffs and expect a different result. And so from that standpoint, it seems like we still have a lot to go from where the administration is coming from with regards to tariffs and what might be an adequate solution for those that are importing, manufacturing, distributing. While most of the Beltway Washington here is really focused on the House Ways and Means Committee tax writers as they draft the reconciliation bill, manufacturers and distributors should not lose sight of the ongoing uncertainty that trade policy continues to insert into their operations. We'll continue to provide regular updates on tariffs and trade. In the interim, please contact your CLA representative for more information.